My Great Affordable 1911 series was a 22-part series looking at 44 different 1911 pistols to find out what would be the perfect 1911 for me for daily carry and also what would be the best for me again for general range work. So I recently released a video that's an overview of this series and uh, this one is now a follow-up to tell you why I picked a particular 1911 that to me is the perfect carry again for me. Your mileage may vary. <laughs> Welcome to Rider's Range. As this video goes public, uh, we are probably right at 10,000 subscribers, uh, or certainly within a few of that. It's been two and a half years to get there, um, but I'm only there because of you, your support for the channel, uh, the fact that you like videos, you comment on them. Uh, all of those things help the alg algorithm and help it get noticed, so it certainly helps us grow, and for that I'm very, very thankful. And don't forget to subscribe, click on the notifications bell so you know uh, when the next video is going to release. And the next one, well, at least within the first couple of videos after this, will be a follow-up uh, where I select the best pistol again for me for uh, range use or general range use as opposed to carry. Before I reveal which of these 44 1911s uh, I picked for my carry gun, uh, some basic criteria. Every carry gun is some type of a compromise. Compromise on, uh, on size, on weight, on caliber. All of those have to do with how well you can conceal it, how easily you can carry it, and uh, how well you can shoot it. All of that comes into play. Obviously, a, um, a heavy gun is going to be less likely to be carried than a lighter gun. A uh, larger gun is going to be generally less uh, easy to conceal than a, uh, than a smaller gun. A smaller gun is going to be more difficult to shoot. A uh, larger caliber, uh, in general, everything else considered, is going to be a little more difficult to shoot than a smaller caliber. So all of those things are compromise, and the compromise was involved in me selecting the, uh, again for me, the, the best carry 1911. And because of those compromises, I eliminated virtually every full-size 1911. Now, I have carried a full-size. Uh, I can do it. I would just prefer not to. I also eliminated most steel frame guns, and again, that's because of weight. Uh, I think I did keep one in the final five, but we'll see where, uh, where all of that goes. Uh, I also eliminated most 45 caliber guns, and again, uh, call me a wimp. Uh, maybe it's just the uh, um, wisdom that comes with old age that uh, maybe I'm just as uh, uh, capable with a, a 9mm as I am with a 45, maybe even better. Um, or maybe not. Uh, so far I'd like to think that uh, I can shoot a 9mm just a little better, a little quicker than I can a 45, and uh, that's why I eliminated almost all the 45s, not all of them. I did really like the, uh, the Colt Wiley Clap Commander. Um, it's a uh, not quite full size, it's alloy frame which makes it uh, nice and easy to carry, um, but I did uh, eliminate that, um, mainly because the uh, uh, grip on that, the, the grip frame is squared off and uh, it prints a little more um, and just uh, it's a little harder to conceal. Uh, for that same reason I eliminated uh, both uh, Ruger commanders. I like the, uh, the bobtail if you're in a full size frame or a commander class, I really like the bobtail type of frame. And even getting down into the officer size, I really like the fact that uh, some companies have slightly rounded off the heel of that frame uh, and not kept it square. It does help uh, conceal and it uh, does make it just a little more comfortable to shoot, particularly when you're using the smaller officer size frame. So again, anything with a uh, squared off frame, with one exception, was pretty much eliminated. And um, anything with a full size frame, um, again, with one exception, was pretty much eliminated. Um, while I get down to the, the final five. So really, I'd, I wish every manufacturer would take a, a page out of the uh, Dan Wesson playbook and uh, just round off that grip frame on the officer size pistols. It's not a full bobtail, not bobtail like the uh, Smith & Wesson Scandium frame guns are, uh, which, by the way, do conceal fairly well. But just rounding off that grip frame makes a huge difference, and I don't understand why manufacturing, well, I guess I do, because it costs a little bit more money to to put the time into rounding the mainspring housing and the grip frame. But still, uh, how much more can it cost? I don't know. Dan Wesson manages to do it on all of theirs. So my final five guns uh, that made it out of the 44, that made it into the selection for a carry gun, in no particular order, the uh, original Staccato C, uh, the Kimber Ultra Carry 2 9mm, and three from Dan Wesson, the Point Man Carry, the uh, ECO, and the Guardian. 
and we'll go through my selection process and narrow it down to one. Now the Dan Wesson Point Man Carry was uh, still included in the Final Five. It, it, it's a steel frame gun, but it is commander size, and it is a 45. I have carried that gun, and I still do carry it occasionally. In fact, I'm doing a uh, a revisited video on that. Uh, it'll be coming out in the not too distant future. I like the gun. I like the looks. I like the function of it, even though we had some difficulties with it initially. Those have all been worked out. However, that's the first one to go, mainly because of the weight. It does exceed the uh, uh, the weight limit that I generally set for uh, for me for a comfortable carry gun. Now, the original Staccato C, uh, I bought uh, that one shortly after Staccato came out with the C model. And by the way, the, the STI Corporation from STI International from back then is now called Staccato, a lot in uh, part because of that pistol. Uh, one thing I really didn't like about that was the, the texture on the grip. Now, granted, uh, Talon could uh, certainly um, uh, change that for me, but it's not like any other 1911 where uh, I don't like the grip. I can change the grip. You can't do that with a staccato, particularly with that modular type frame. I had a minor complaint with the magazine release. Um, and, you know, that gun shot great. It is, uh, it's built as one of the uh, nicest shooting or best shooting or softest shooting carry guns around. I don't disagree with that. Uh, it was a great gun. It worked really well for me. The gun just didn't speak to me. Um, and the fact that it had a uh, about a two and a half pound trigger uh, was to me too light to carry. Now, can a, the trigger be fixed? Sure. If everything else worked great on it, uh, the, the trigger would be a non-starter because that could be fixed. But because of all of those things, the unfortunately Staccato C uh, didn't make the final three. And I also eliminated the Kimber Ultra Carry 2 9mm. I, I did carry that gun for a while. I like it. It does have a squared off grip frame, which I really don't like. But again, that can fairly easily be fixed. But um, I liked it, but so did my daughter like it. So you can guess now where that Ultra Carry 2 9mm lives. And it doesn't live in my safe. So that left the Dan Wesson Guardian, which I have carried, and also left the Dan Wesson ECO. Uh, two different guns. The Guardian is obviously a commander size gun uh, with a full size frame, but it's bobtailed in a four and a quarter inch uh, barrel, whereas the uh, ECO is an officer size frame, so the capacity is a little bit less, and it's got a three and a half inch barrel. Two slightly different guns. I've carried them both, I like them both. The, uh, the Guardian, uh, again, I wouldn't hesitate to carry that again today. Uh, turn off was the, uh, the three dot sights, but again, sights can be fixed, not a big deal. Other than that, I liked everything else about the Guardian, but just something about my number one pick for a carry gun is the Dan Wesson ECO 9mm. Not the 45, but the, uh, the 9. Uh, I love the sights on it, I love the trigger, I love the feel. It is a wonderful handling firearm. It shoots great, it's accurate, it's reliable. Uh, probably the only thing that I, only complaint I would have about the ECO is the leading edge of the ejection port uh, is squared off rather sharp. And the only time I have any problem with that is when I'm trying to uh, draw, if I'm putting forward pressure on it as I'm drawing out of my favorite holster, the, uh, the Garrett uh, Silent Thunder uh, STX, then that gun has a tendency to hang up a little bit. Other than that, the ECO 9mm is my choice. And again, that's just for me. Your mileage is going to vary on all of this. For me, that's what works. All right, so now you know, out of those 44, that's my favorite carry gun now. A couple of things, uh, caveats here. Number one, uh, that was my favorite out of those 44. The question is, is that still my favorite carry gun? And after I've reviewed oh, more than a dozen other 1911 or 1911 uh, style type uh, uh, of guns, guns based on 1911s, uh, is the ECO still my favorite carry gun? You're going to have to wait a couple of weeks to uh, get an answer to that one. In the meanwhile, next week we have coming out the uh, my selection for uh, a uh, an all-around range gun. Range gun being different than a uh, than a carry gun. Range gun's going to be shot more, uh, different circumstances, different use, and so forth. So I did pick at least one, maybe even two range guns. Stick around to see where that goes. Remember to cl uh, subscribe, click on the notifications bell so you know when that video is going to come up. Uh, if all goes well, I'm going to be dropping that video on Sunday the, the 9th, so one week from uh, this video should be out there. So that's where we are on the carry gun. And, um, you know, I, again, I couldn't be here without you folks, so I, I, I really thank you for all of your support, and I hope all of you have a prosperous, healthy, safe, enjoyable 2022. Thanks for dropping in.